Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna take a look into the Moria faction in Battle for Middle Earth 1 and the Legends of the Third Age mod. Solo play, skirmish this time with the Moria faction and I would like to play against two hard armies just because I believe this way we can get all the power points unlocked a bit faster. So let's take a look into this power, uh, into this maps, I don't know this map, Tarbat. I think that's a nice map for a 1v2 situation. So let's pick up two hard armies, team them up with team two, and we will be picking up this spot against two hard armies. Let's get it started. Okay, so Moria, I have not played this one time before. I don't have any clue about this faction just yet, but we're gonna take a look into that together. All right, so this is how the map is looking like. We are able to build some resource buildings. Those are called uh, the mines. We are starting the game with the Moria Goblin Warrior Battalion, two of them. And we will be using them at the beginning of the game to get those settlements around us. Uh, I'm actually curious if we are able to build those Slammer Mills, just like with the Isengard or Mordor faction. The answer is no. We are only able to build these uh, mines, which are gonna cost, uh, reduce the cost of our monsters significantly. Okay, so as for heroes, we are able to recruit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 heroes, starting from Gollum, for 300 he's pretty expensive actually, uh, Rothok, the Snow Troll from the north, Shelob, the Spider Queen, that's nice, Bulk, that's the son from Azok, and last but not least, Krill, uh, that should be the chief of the Moria Goblins, I don't know that, I was just reading the description, my bad, <laughs> alright, so let's actually start with Gollum, of course, Gollum, you know, everybody likes Gollum. Even my wife likes Gollum and she didn't even watch Lord of the Rings just yet. But she knows Gollum. Gollum is the most famous uh, League of, uh, not League of Legends. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, Lord of the Rings character for sure. So let's build some more farms. They cost 350 each, just like slaughterhouses or furnaces or farms. Slightly cheaper than, uh, say it, than blacksmiths. Oh, we are not able to cross the bridge, okay? So that's interesting, but there is a settlement next to us. Gollum is quite fast, but so are the Goblin Warriors, or, you know, what is the name of them, once again? Uh, Moria Goblin Warriors. Remember, Goblins is a faction um, in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King, and I believe that's quite similar to the Goblin faction. Let's pick up this one as well, and let's try to buff them. But we have no buff, we have cave pads here. Uh, is this a buff? No. There's like a, a debuff on an enemy structure. It's actually quite nice. Minus 50% armor and minus 35% production, which is quite a lot. But I would like to pick up the keypads. And we can use them also to scout the area, just to see the enemy factions. Remember, we are playing 1 versus 2 in this one. So let's build some towers to feel a bit safer. And we were able to creep this one as well. That's great. We can now pick up this uh, mine right after to get even more money. Now we will have three outside settlements under our... What is ha what is happening? Oh, it's E, not F. Okay, that's interesting. I was pressing F all the time as a shortcut, you know? Okay. Because that's interesting. Uh, in the... What am I building here? I'm building the Deep Forge here and not the mine. Okay. So Deep Forge is looking like that. And that's gonna be a cost reduction for the upgrades. And the other one is a cost reduction for the... Uh, monsters, pretty much. I didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, I was surprised for a second. We have some, you know, units to kill. That's how the towers are looking like. I like this design quite a lot with the goblin archer. One single archer, by the way. But he is not one archer. He is the archer. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's build some more towers. This way we can play a bit more aggressively. We see Mordor here, and we have a Nazgul on the field too. But Gollum. Has some abilities here, as you can see. Hidden in the dark, which is a passive thing. Gollum is invisible when he is idle. Smeagol the Good is a heal. Nice. We've level 3 already. Gollum the Bad, which will decrease the enemy movements. Oh, but he's so squishy. Oh, he's getting knocked back on the, on the ground too. Oh, he's getting trampled. <laughs> I mean, he was kicking us into the treasure. Why we... Oh, <laughs> I would like to get the treasure there. But we need to get a stronger hero on the field. Uh, we are only able to recruit this dude, which, who is called Krill. Um, and I'm curious about how powerful he actually might be. Once again, that's the first time I'm playing the Moria faction in Legends of the Third Age mod for Battle for Middle-earth 1. 
And you're also able to play this mod. Of course, it's absolutely for free. Okay, that's how he's looking like. He has the spear throw, like Eomir. And I want to see the damage against those orcs. I mean, orcs are not the best units to test the damage of a hero because they get one-shotted pretty much from everything, including a normal unit. So I'm not surprised about this situation, but they are dealing actually quite a lot of damage to our building. I mean, it's gonna be a risky, but I would just like to skip the units for now and get all the heroes on the field instead. And Carnage with level 4, he's a melee hero. Uh, Favor of the Chief, which will give experience. He looks like Scavenger though, but it's not a Scavenger. It gives experience to the selected allied units. And last but not least, Call from the Deep. That's like, I mean, this ability exists, by the way, in BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King for Garkingle the Goblin King, and he's able to summon up to 3 Fire Drakes. And here, he's only able to increase the production speed from the Moria Goblin Lairs. Okay, so there is a hero that I want to see that. I want to see the leader of the Orcs against the leader of the Goblins. Okay, Gothmog versus the guy who has a name I can't pronounce. But we are cheating, the tower is helping. But we need to make sure that he's the one who is finishing. Actually, Bulk is quite... Uh, I mean, this uh, Gothmog is pretty strong. Look at that. Oh, that he are, they are also cheating. Oh, nice. But we're gonna lose him? Run, you fool. He looks like a normal Goblin Warrior, by the way. That's the most funny part about this. But he's quite low. We are able now to recruit uh, this guy. He's the most expensive guy. Let's get him on the field first. Because I believe the more expensive a hero is, the more impact he will have on the game, but we are losing quite a lot. We will be losing those towers in no time. Tower guards are tanky. This is no rubble of mindless soldiers. These are tower guards. Their armor is thick and their shields broad indeed. Look at the shields, dude. I mean, the shield is bigger than me, <laughs> pretty much. And I'm a tall guy, by the way. I'm 182. And I'm not from USA. I don't talk about feet. And oh my goodness. Talking about big ladies and gentlemen. Who's this? Slap. Hitting like a truck. Oh, he looks dope. Look at this design. Look at him. Look at him. He's so slow though. But I saw Faramir somewhere around. Uh, there is Boromir. And the army of the dead guy. I mean, how can we kill him though? That's the question. He's so slow though. It looks like he's moving in slow motion. We are able to collect some power points. Let's pick up something else. Yeah? Tainted land. I believe we need scavenger. And what is that? Goblin can be recruited from the abandoned mines. That's nice. Let's pick up this one as well. Because now we will get the chance to recruit goblins. But luckily, or unfortunately, not luckily, we have no mines under our control because we lost every single settlement. I want to see this guy. He's also able to throw rocks, just like a normal troll. Look, he's moving like a boss or like a grandma. One of these two. Let me know in the comment section down below. Is he walking like a boss or like a grandma? Okay, let's pick up this one as well. And this one right after. But once again, I'm pressing F all the time because I'm so used to it. You know what I'm saying? So E is the shortcut. And now we are able, soon we will be able to recruit a bulk. There we go. And then the last hero is going to be Shelob, the Spider Queen of Sirid Ungol, okay? That's the plan. I see a Elvin Wood around this side. So I believe that's from the Men of the West because we know we are against Men of the West and it's Mordor. Okay, bunch of archers and I want to get some levels now. I don't know if we can already face the enemy heroes just yet. Uh, lead leadership with level 3 for the nearby allied trolls. And with level 4 you have the Terror, which is a fear effect on the enemy units. And then, with level 6 you have the Tough Armor, which is going to make him more resistant against arrows and spears. And last but not least, Earth Shatterer. Knock surrounding enemies. Oh, but there is a Felvis on the field, dude. That's crazy. Okay. We need Shelob. And we need... I, I believe none of our heroes is able to attack a flyer. So that means we will... He has even fire upgrade already. Are you kidding me? But this guy is smash. He's like the Hulk of Middle-earth, you know what I'm saying? Look at him. Slapping him on... <laughs> what the heck is this damage? And luckily we have Scavenger, that means we are getting money, money, money. But what is this? Oh, but Bulk is... This guy. Slap. It's a 3v1 situation, but he's able to slap our Bulk. But he's gonna die now, it's a, we are cheating. We are using 3v1. 
And now we have five power points collected now, which means we can get uh, summon a lone mine. Okay. Warband treasures. Which is, uh, yeah, it's gonna drop some treasure, I believe. And then we have the summon barrow whites. We're gonna take a look into that one. And earthquake with level shadow and flame. That's the mods of PFME 1. <laughs> Un unlocks during spin, okay? I believe we will be also able to recruit a Balrog later on. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, that's the good thing about playing against this many opponents because we will get the chance uh, to get the power points unlocked way, way faster and also our heroes are going to level up way, way faster too. So because we are against a Mordor, he's going to be our first target because he has no cat. I mean, he has no walls around the base. That means we won't have to kill the walls first, unlike from Gondo. Because that's a hard army. And they're always closing the gate. So let's demolish one of the buildings first. And then we will be building the armory. Just because I want to buy all the upgrades first before we will recruit some units. I want to be done with that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, there is a Nazgul. We can kill him. But I'm a bit scared of this fell beast Because I, I don't know if we can kill him. Spider Queen is also on the field now. That's great. By the way, if you attack someone, this guy, the hero, Rothog, is going to... Move a bit faster, like you can see now. And he's smashing. He's very, very strong. And knocking down these Nazgûls on the ground as well. He's like the leader of the orcs, uh, trolls, I mean. Luckily, this Felbis is doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm lucky I'm lucky about this. It's, wait a second. I'm actually curious if she's able to move through everything, just like in BFME 2 in Rise of the Witch King. Let's see this. Because normally, she would be able to move through the water, you know? She doesn't care. Okay, let's kill this Nazgul next. Shelob is level 3. Has the poison stinger. Boromir is. Oh, we can kill Boromir first. You wanna fight? You wanna play a rough? Say hello to my little spider. Eat Boromir alive. And once again, Boromir is always dying. <laughs> okay, we will see now. Oh, I believe we can't. I believe we can't. Now we can't. We can't. That's unfortunate. There is a Peregrine Took. Let's take him down. We have four power points collected now. I would like to get some settlements back. We will be losing this one at the bottom right side, but that's fine. Armory is now up on the field. We can buy all the upgrades at once. What is that? We are also able to recruit goblin warriors from the armory. That's quite interesting. Now we can demolish one of the other buildings and uh, get the troll layer. Work layer and goblin layer. So let's get the troll layer first because we have the leader of the trolls. I'm pressing F once again. I'm so used to it, you know? We were not here on time. We lost this settlement, but it's kind of fine, I guess. Now, I want to group all the heroes at once. What is happening? <laughs> I can't get those settlements, dude. Finally. Right, I want to group all the heroes first. And because I want to be able to share experience, you know? And this way, we can get our heroes leveled up faster. This map is actually quite interesting. I've not seen this map before as well. Let's go for attack. And I'm actually curious why this Felbis doesn't choose to attack us. I don't know why. Okay, this is gonna be the last. From this building, we are able to recruit the Cave Trolls and uh, Half Troll uh, Pikemen, I believe. And last but not least, the Giants. And that's one of the best upgrades, actually, to be FME 1, that you are able now to buy your upgrade to level 2 to level 3 from a building. Because normally, you need you can't do that. Normally you need this guy is so slow when he is normally walking, you know? He's extremely slow. You need to be always charging with this dude if you want to make a good use of him because he will be always slow. But there is a trick. Like for example, we know there are openings, but we don't know there are openings here. But when we G and right click, he knows. Oh never mind. That doesn't work here. Uh, it works also, yeah, yeah. So when there is a settlement on the ground from your opponent, even if you don't see that, and if, even if you can't target that. He's still able to charge. For example, I'm not targeting anything. Pressing G on my keyboard. And right-clicking on a settlement I'm able to see on the minimap. And that's how we can charge. Those are Haradrim arches, by the way. We are getting attacked once again, but we should be fine. Because once our buildings are level 3, they're gonna all act like a tower. We have 6 power points collected, which means we have now the Durin Spin. Summon the Watcher. And Darkness. So Durin Spin is gonna be, of course, our choice. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, we are able to recruit Durin Spain for 8,000 resources. But I believe now we can demolish the armory because we don't need it anymore. Let's kill these units. This leader of the army of the dead is so fast. What's, what's going on? 
but he's not fast enough. Okay, nice. Level 9, one of our dudes. Uh, okay, that's kind of not very useful. This is more like a sportive hero, I'm assuming. But he has the Carnage, which is going to give him a great boost of damage and armor. Our Troll, which is the most expensive hero besides the Balrog, is level 7 now. Has the passive, the tough armor, which makes him more tanky, I guess. And Bulk. Let's take a look into Bulk. He's able to get mounted on the Vork. Uh, he has also the Crippling Strike, pins enemy hero, just in place. I believe that's like a uh, ranged ability, not ranged, like a melee ability, unlike from Lourdes. Tenacity. Bulk gains 500% armor for a short time. That's great. And last but not least, come forth my armies. He's able to summon goblins and half trolls next to his side. Oh, he almost killed our Tzitza somehow. I don't know how, but he almost killed it. You gotta be careful. We lost all the towers here, by the way. Oh, that's gonna be bad. This building is almost level 3. Don't lose. And Chilop is also able to trample down the enemy units. That's great. I like that. So, we are still a bit away from getting enough money to get uh, Durin Spain, aka the Balrog, on the field. And that's why we need to be a bit patient. Until we have enough money. Because I wanna not recruit any units just yet until we have enough, you know, for the, for the Balrog. I want to see that first. And we are also able to pick some more power points. Maybe we can get this one. Because eventually we're going to get them all. I want to see this how this is looking like. If we can use it, of course. We can't use it. I don't know where to use it. Uh, loot treasures from the mine. Oh. From the mines. Uh-huh. What? I'm actually kind of curious. I can't use it. Do you, do you see that, guys? I can't. Okay, interesting. And um, we have to fight ally summon. Let's do this. Where is that? Summon a lone mine. And I'm also... There we go. And now I can maybe use it? No? Does it give me money? I believe this also gives me money. Yeah, yeah, it gives me money. That's nice. You are able to summon a resource building. That's great, actually. I like that. And Bulk, once he's level 8, yeah, is able to summon more units. Shiloh has the breed. Summon spiderlings from the ground, that's nice. And then she has also the giant spider web, which uh, nearby enemies in spider webs, enemies suffer minus 30% speed and minus 10% armor for a short time. And last but not least, the dig tunnel. Dig to a uh, location, that's nice. So she will be able to teleport herself, pretty much. And once this guy is level, oh nice. Oh, Earth Shatter is already available, that's great. Nice. I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of similar to the Shadow and Flame mod, but we have played a couple of months ago on this channel. If you haven't watched the videos just yet, I would highly recommend... Oh, we didn't... what is this? But we have enough money for the Durin Spain, that's great. It's not the same, of course, but it's pretty similar. In my opinion, at least. Okay, let's kill this Tower Guards. I mean, we are getting attacked all the time. There is another army of the dead guy. This guy is level 10. Do we have Poison Stinger here? Yes, we do have Poison Stinger. Let's uh, see how it looks like. But the, oh, wait a second. There is Mouth of Sauron. We can use maybe this this one on him. The Poison Stinger. I want to see the damage output. Oh, it's not bad damage. What is this? Okay, nice. Level 7. I see you. Mordor is using the Great Eye of Sauron. But it's not great enough. This Velvis is doing absolutely nothing. I'm down. I'm fine with that. Okay, let's recruit every single unit from this. The mountain giant... Oh, finally he's making a move. No. You wanna just see Boromir getting killed. <laughs> he's like, let me just watch. I'm here to watch you. Okay, level 8 Spider Queen. That's great. 4,600 HP. 2,600 with level 8. 3,600. And 1,900. So we can agree that this is the squishiest guy, but he's also the cheapest hero. Shilob is the tankiest by far. And then Rofok and last... Bulk after, of course, after this dude, who is the cheapest hero. I was not paying attention. The reason why I'm playing like that is I want to just play a bit safe, because I want to take a look into every single unit. That's the giant, by the way. You are also able to attack, move, guard, and stop, and throw rocks. He is also able to fight in melee. That's how he's looking like. Pretty similar to the giants of PFME 2 in the Rise of the Witch King. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the legendary Balrog. And we will get to see his damage now with the Fire Whip against the Nazgul. But I believe he is not unkillable. 
And also the brief fire is going to have much longer cooldown than from the summon in normal day for me. Pew! Oh, actually does zero damage. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. But he's able to one-shot them by trampling. And this ignite gives you also less. Oh, no, never mind. 200% increased damage. But still the fire whip was almost... Highly powerful versus heroes and flying monsters. Are you sure about that? Did you see how much damage I dealt to this flying monster? Almost none. With the enchanted uh, ignite. So kind of not promising. Kind of misleading description, not gonna lie. This guy is annoying me. And we have nothing to kill him, that's the problem. Okay, let's move now for the attack. I mean, he has soldiers and stuff like that. I believe they can't do anything to us. He's gonna die to the towers, finally. Go down, go down, go down. And, uh... I'm actually curious why I can't use this one, you know? I'm really, very really curious about this. Oh, wait a second. Balrog didn't move with them, for whatever reason. Let's peel back. This guy is extremely slow. Trample them down, Balrog. The Durin's beam. The Balrog, the demon from the ancient world, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? So those are the half troll pikemen, just like from BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King. Pretty similar, copy paste pretty much, nothing crazy, but they are also able to use the tight formation. Decrease movement speed, increased armor. Looks like this. It's nice. And then we will also get a chance to get a look or take a look into the secondary building, which is of course the Moria... Borg layer, okay? Oh, but look, it's so funny when he's on the water. The animation, it's like he's getting washed, you know? Oh, wait a second. I can't fly either. You need to be level 4 for the wings. I'm curious about the damage now against the trebuchet. Let's see. With the fire whip. Wait a second. Oh, nice. One shot it. That's great. Oh, Shelob has to be careful. Let's use this one. Use it? No? She doesn't want to use it. Looks like she want to do something, but then she needs like ages. Yeah, yeah she is like, it's like, yeah, it's like charging. It's not like inst- Oh, oh. Oh my goodness, I was not paying attention for a single second and we lost two heroes. Two heroes, just like that. We might even lose the third one, but we have to come forth, my armies. Nice. Volk stands alone, not alone, goblins! <laughs> but our Balrog is kind of tanky. It is an outpost, that's a nice spot. Look at this outpost, ladies and gentlemen, that's great, am I right? But once again, it's extremely slow, because he's not mobile. Uh, we need to kill back. Oh, Shilob was able to survive, that's great. So we are only able to, uh, I mean, we are only losing these two heroes. That's how the Vork Leia is looking like, or Vork Pit, rather, or Vork Leia, actually. Work riders and work packs. Banner can also be purchased from this building. That's great. Is damage against the buildings? What is. Okay, finally. Not the best, to be honest. Uh, but on the other side, I was not using the ignite. I want to see the ignite cooldown. So it's definitely way longer or much longer than in normal BFME 1. But again, in BFME 1, normally he is not permanent. That here is permanent, you know, until he dies. And uh, it's not about his damage, it's about his tankiness. He's so tanky. The others are almost dealing no damage to him. 10 power points collected, which means we can get the Watcher. And this one, the Darkness. Darkness is a buff for the entire map, which is going to increase our uh, damage from the, from the allied units in the entire map by 40% and armor by 20%. And this is how the base, or the outpost rather, from the Goblin Faction is looking like. Looks like that. We are able now to get... I don't know why we are able to buy banner. Because we have already bought banner before. That's interesting. Let's also demolish this one. Because then we're gonna take a look into the last production building. Which is the Goblin Lair. Okay. Our heroes are back in the business. That's great. Let's group them all together. And also these units are permanent by the way. From the summon of uh, Bulk. Okay. Are we able to build towers here? Uh, the answer is not, no, but I'm actually kind of happy that you are able to build these uh, statues. 
around. He's finally level 4. That's great. I want to take a look into this building too. Uh, and build also this mate. And I'm not able to use this dwarven treasure or something like that. Which is very interesting. The army of the dead leader is once again around this side. But we should be fine. Oh, let's see the cooldown of the wings. I want to see that. So of course definitely a little bit longer cooldown. But not too much. You are actually able to fly quite a lot. Gonna lose this outpost. But that's kind of fine I guess. Use ignite. So Goblin Faction Beast is looking like this, so everything is a bit minimalistic. You know, the, the Fortress, for example, looks like that. Okay, now we can start... Oh, I want to see this damage against Mouth of Sauron. Phew! Oh, come here! Okay, let's see. Baldrog versus Mouth of Sauron. Pew! Pew! Nice. Level 5 unlocks. Level 8 is needed for the Breath Fire. Our heroes are doing absolutely nothing. Time to move with them. Goblin Nair is looking like this. We are also able to uh, get spider links from the Goblin Nair. Goblin Arches, of course. And also Banner Carrier. Oh, yeah, yeah. We are able to get heavy armor and also the Forge Blades. But they are quite expensive. 680. Okay. Are we also able... Yeah, we are also able to put some units inside the jeans. Inside the tower. This guy is just standing there like a boss and tanking everything. He doesn't care. I want to see the damage now against the buildings. Let's see the range of the wings, shall we? And our uh, other heroes can clean up this area. This way we can reclaim this outpost. That's is that's the plan. So let's use Ignite. 200% damage boost. So should be dealing quite a lot of damage. Very few guys are knowing that you are also able to attack the wall with Balrog, you know? Not only the gate. And breaking the wall is always dealing more damage because the wall, in order to repair the wall, you need to invest much more money than when it comes to repair the gate. So breaking the wall is nice. However, breaking the gate is a bit better because the wall can be repaired. And even when, you, when it's like it's five person or something like that, your opponent is still not able to enter. But your gate doesn't work like that. Okay, let's see the... This one without the ignite now. I want to see the whip against the trebuchet on the wall. Pew! Oh, not one shotting anymore. Okay, interesting. Can I also fly on top? No, I can't. <laughs> okay. I wanted to fly on top of the trebuchet, you know, but it's not working like that. He's also dealing damage, area damage when he's landing. After he's flying. Nice. Okay. This Nazgul is quite annoying me. And also, there is Witch King. This Witch King is also annoying me. Let's peel back with our heroes and take... Wait a second, I have an idea. Wait a second. That's what we have Shilop for, right? Oh, but this guy is going inside the jeans now. Shilop? There we go, Shilop is here, nice. Now you want to fight Witch King? You might be the Witch King. No man can kill you, but a spider can. Nice. <laughs> okay. That's great. Nice, we take him down. Also, he's, uh, she is level 10. It's a she lob, not he lob. You got it? You got it? Okay, this joke wasn't the best. My bad. My bad. And by the way, guys, if you enjoy this content on this channel, please make sure to... Why he's not attacking? Please make sure to leave a like on this video and also subscribe for more content like this. What you can also do, if you want to, is check me out on my Twitch channel. Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. That's the place where we stream uh, every couple of days live and host tournaments. I mean, we have nothing to kill this fell beast. That's the biggest problem of the got right now. But uh, he's dying to the tower at least. That's nice. Okay, we need to give... Uh... Okay, so... Let's get some more units, I guess. The Alrock is in safe place. Kinda. Okay, I want to see this. I want to see this. Oh, it's like a Ward of Power animation. Earth Shatterer. Pew! Okay, <laughs> the the the, can, the challenge channeling looks much more awesome than actually what it looks like when you are done with it. You know what I'm saying? But it's still fine. I mean, it's nice to see some new stuff in the game, and that's what the mods are for, of course. And this one is from the Blue Wizard mod. It's like an update, and the name is the Legends of the Third Age. It includes two different factions: the Moria faction, that's the one we are taking into a look into right now. And also Lothlorien. 
But of course, that's not all. Every other faction like Gondor, Rohan, Isengard and Mordor also got reworked. So there are many, many differences. Trust me on that one. Okay, now we have the Earthquake, which is uh, looking like this. We are also able now to use the keypads to see what's going on and let's use this. Oh, that's nice. Look at this. That's great. Look at the area damage. Doesn't deal too much damage against the Fortress. But it's gonna still be able to kill it eventually, right? There we go. And the good thing is you can leave it like that and it's able to deal multiple uh, damage in, around the area. So that's... Look at the animation. Look at the shake animation. That's great. Okay, now we might be able to finish off this Gondor with our heroes. And also Balrog can join the party because he's almost level 8. Once again, that's gonna unlock the Brave Fire. But this army of the dead guy is annoying me. Dude, I'm literally killing your base. Why don't... Why are you are here and trying to kill my towers all the time? This is so annoying. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help, bro. Oh, this guy's angry. Come forth, my armies. The tenacity. This guy is like, he doesn't care too. He's so slow, dude. It's unbelievable. He's so slow. And he doesn't feel... But I want to throw rocks now. Oh. Nice. He's actually throwing quite fast. I like that. Oh, breath fire unlocked. Nice. Ooh. Let's... Use the ignite and breath. Uh, let's use the ignite. Let's see the. I mean, that doesn't count. They're already bad damage, but it's still. Okay, let's kill this sitter next. And this way we can finish off this Gondor base. I don't know if this is gonna be enough to take him down. But the hard army in BFME 1, as you can see and tell, isn't the smartest. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they don't attack me coordinated, you know? It's like playing 1v1v1. Okay, Heart Army has been defeated, that means we have only the Mordor opponent left to defeat, and then we will be victorious. And let's build an army Worthy of Moria, I guess. Work Riders, Goblin Warriors, they look like this. Spiderlings are only able to get this uh, Anna. And now we can use this group of units to send them to this side. Our heroes are able to... We need to wait a couple of seconds, I guess. We have not seen the White Summon just yet, I want to see that. Um, where? I'm actually kind of curious because I... Oh, finally, dude! It leaves money on the ground indeed. That's nice because we will need that. White Summon is looking like that. Barrow White Touch. 50% of the damage dealt heals the Whites. And we will get the chance to see that. Phew! Uh, he's able to sustain actually a lot, but the 50% damage is not, is not the greatest in this case. Now we are also able to get this one. That's nice. I mean, Balrog is always strong, you know? Because you have a permanent Balrog you are able to recruit. But the Lothlorien faction was having a permanent Galadriel. So every faction, I believe, has a really strong hero you are able to unlock from your spellbook first. So I believe it's kind of okay. But once again, um, talking about the balance of a mod by playing only single player isn't gonna work like that. We need to play multiplayer games because... Otherwise, it's very, very hard and difficult to say if this is balanced or if it's not, un if it's unbalanced. But once again, the mods are not meant to be balanced, you know? They are meant to be fun. So if you are looking for a balanced thing, you're potentially not going to enjoy any mods. So see it as a fun thing. And you can also play pretty much... Uh, look at this base of Mordor, though. That's quite interesting. Looks like the uh, Morgul thing, you know? Okay, so let's pick up this settlement as well. Now we can move on and destroy the last remaining base. Summon the Watcher. I want to see that. Looks, like, but there is nothing to. Anyways, we're gonna summon that anyways. We can maybe summon here. No. I mean the summon is not like I don't. I'm not happy with the summoning thing because some doesn't work for whatever reason. That's how the Watcher is looking like. Pretty much like the Watcher in BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King. I mean, nothing new. We have seen this already many, many times. But I'm a fan of this, that this actually exists, because it's it was also existing in the films. Remember when they were about, about to enter Moria? Uh, that's what we were attacking them. And actually almost killed the Hobbits. Okay. So let's build some more settlements to fill up the base, shall we? And then grab this settlement next to us. And once again, that's the last remaining base. And we, have, we got Balrog. We got level 10 Rothrog. We have so many, 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 many heroes. That's crazy. 
They post a lot of money. I mean, I, I you know what I would love to see? And I don't know if this is possible, of course, but it would be awesome. If you could see after the game the statistics of your power points from this spellbook. Just for example, after you are done with the game, or even in the game, if you could see how much money you was earning from this scavenger, from this spellbook. I believe when you see this kind of stuff, it's also way, way easier for the people to balance that, you know? But this guy doesn't care, he was knocking down Shilob. <laughs> Alright. And also the designs were pretty minimalistic. I like the pictures, but other than that, uh, I mean, it's kind of double-edged sword, you know? When you focus too much on the graphics, uh, it's gonna make the mod extremely laggy in multiplayer. And also laggy for the people with, uh, like, a not the best PC, you know what I'm saying? And that's why it's kind of like the beats. Should I make more detailed and greater design of the units or should I keep it minimalistic? I personally like when it's designed greatly because then you have always the options to turn the graphic settings down in your options. You know, if you are not able to play that on ultra settings. But other people who want to enjoy this mod in better graphic settings can still choose that. And Age of the Ring and Shadow and Flame are doing both great job about the graphics and about the uh, about the animations of the power points, for example, about the animations of the hero abilities. While um, this, from my first impression, is kind of minimalistic. I mean, still a great job, especially the Earthquake, for example, looks like that. But could be a little bit better, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I would like to take a look into Golem a bit more, but I believe it's incredibly hard to level him up because he's such a, such a squishy hero. Like, getting him to level 10 or something like that is going to be nearly impossible. Let's use Ignite. And the Sheik animation is great. I, I gotta be honest, it's nice, I like that. We are losing all our heroes, by the way. Let's use Tenacity and let's peel back. Chill up, you're also run. You can stay. You gotta kill this sitter. Chill up, you need to run. Chill up, chill up, chill up, chill up, chill up. Okay. Chill up can climb across mountains, okay? I mean, but she, she doesn't know what to do in those kind of situations. He lost a lot of heroes. And let's also revive Gollum because Gollum shall also see a victory screen. Because we are all about to win this game, guys. Um, so that's an interesting map. There is an outpost in the center. Oh, he was biting this outpost, so we won't be able to win this one, actually. We are also not able to summon the... Okay, but what we can do, we need to get vision. And we can summon. And the summon things, they don't work that nicely. I gotta be honest, too. That's not the best, I need to say. Look at this. Why I'm not able to summon them? I don't get it. That's This, this would tilt me a little bit, you know? Okay. Why? Why doesn't it... What is that, dude? I mean... Like, it's so hard to summon things in this mod. Maybe it's the map. Maybe it's the faction. I don't know. We gotta kill those units first. Uh, I wanna see the damage output from these guys against the buildings. Balrog, please finish off this base. All you need to do is kill this one last tower in this one building. One shot, right? Let me check. Yeah, one shot, of course. And now we can fly on top of this wall of this tower and use Ignite. No, we couldn't do it. But we can use it before we land this way. We will not lose any time. So we can now capture this camp or castle arena. Wait for the other heroes like Gollum is here, for example. I mean, they are not dealing a lot of damage, but it's also kind of fine. Because you need to keep in mind that you are able to summon them. I mean, kind of, we need to get one, one, two. Okay, I mean, it's not that easy, easy I guess. But we are able to summon four of them. Let's use this one. Uh, here. Okay. Nazgul doesn't care about his fortress. I want to see the damage of the poison stinger. That's a Nazgul level 6, by the way. Looks like that. So, poison sting stinger uh, slows and poisons enemy heroes. So, he should be taking damage over time. And that's why he's peeling back and coming back again because he realizes there is no escape of the mighty legendary Shilob. Alrock was able to destroy this one, that's great. And last but but last but not least, we need to just destroy this outpost and we are golden. We are golden, we are golden. Breed. Oh now we are able to call spider links and they are also permanent. 
So the summons here are permanent, pretty much. Beside the white uh, and watcher summon. But the summons from the units, when you are able to summon reinforcements from a hero, they are permanent. The only thing I'm kind of upset about is like the watcher and every other summon. Maybe it's the map. It might be the map, so if it's the map, I'm sorry, but if it's not the map, it has to be definitely fixed. Because that's not a normal map. I've not seen this map before, maybe it's just a map, you know? And we're gonna end this duel, end this game, with the Breathfire of Balrog against the Fortress, and the Outpost is gonna be taken down, and we are victorious, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. I hope you enjoyed your stay, if you did, please don't forget to leave a like, let me know in the comment section down below what video you would like to see next. We have Gondor, Isengard, Mordor, and Rohan still to cover, and I would also like to play campaign and let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to play the bfme one campaign in normal game if you want me to play it on shadow and flame mod or on this mod the legends of the third age thanks for watching guys i see you next time until then take care of yourselves and as always stay beyond standards and keep hitting like a truck peace